Welcome to the Call by God podcast with Adney Godet and myself, Nixon Sylvain. This show is about dialogues of biblical characters and testimonies of Christians who submitted to the will of God. Each week, we bring on one guest so that they can share their story of how they were called by God. I hope this show inspires you. Enjoy. Hello and welcome, world, to the Call by God podcast. I'm yours truly, Brother Nick, and I'm here with Sister Adney. Sister Adney, how you doing? I know I've been saying brother and sister lately. You know, I get that from Brother Paul, you know, Brother Saul, when they call him brother. And we call each other brothers and sisters in Christ anyway. We are brothers and sisters. We serve the same God. We were baptized in the same fellowship. You know, God washed all of us clean. So he is our daddy. So yes, we are brother and sisters in Christ. Um, Amen. And you, you know, you know, I prefer brother, right? You know, when you call folks by their full name, you know, that's old school. You think they're in trouble. But anyways, hi, anyway, Addy, how I you can't doing? with you, brother Nick. Um, I'm doing wonderful. Today has been a a, a day of, of fullness. Um, I don't know. Someone nominated me for the Bloom Beautiful Award, and we just had the uh, the whole before we came on, we just um, had the the ceremony, and the vision that the Lord gave me for the ceremony is just so big, and I just can't wait for Him to you know bring it bring it to a bigger platform because that's why I see him taking this thing and the person he used was our dear sister um, Dr. Kimberly Hardy to um, Mm. bring this magnificent piece of work together to celebrate sisters and the words of affirmation from brothers all across the world was just so empowering it's like oh the brothers see us right so I just thought that was just so amazing um, how are you doing, Brother Nick? Are you you ready for this? <laughs> you know, the last show we did on um the pursuit of holiness part two, I think I opened it up and I said, Adney, you know, the the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I think I told you that I was gonna I was gonna start working out. And um, so how am I doing? I'm hurt. I'm injured. Um, I tore my Achilles tendon. So yeah, I mean crutches and a boot and I got a knee <laughs> scooter. <laughs> so I'm beat up. I'm beat up. I'm beat up. But <laughs> I'm beat up in the flesh, but I'm high in the spirit. I'm I'm thankful, Addy. You know, look, let me tell you something. You'll be surprised. Like, you know, when when certain things are taken away from you, you'll be surprised. You'll be like, Lord, I thank you. Now I see why folks, when they wake up, Lord, I thank you. I got two hands, I got two legs. Because when you're limited, man, that stuff, it does something to you. Like, I can't tell you how many times I call my wife, honey! <laughs> I told my wife to sink this in and out till death do its part. I love you too. <laughs> so that's how I'm doing. So, hey, so if y'all listen to this, y'all pray for me, pray for my speedy recovery. So, um, but overall, Addy, I'm, I'm blessed and, and I'm thankful that God has blessed me to see another day. But we're just going to get right into it, Addy. Um, before we, we have a special guest. We have a special guest. Any guest that come on here is a special, special guest. But before we bring her on, I, Addy, I want you to share the word for today because I, I want to hurry up and get to this, this um, discussion with our sister because I want to hear her testimony. Go ahead, Addy. What's the word? Amen. The word for today comes from Proverbs chapter number 22, the NLT version. Verse one, it reads, choose a good reputation over great riches. Being held in high esteem is better than silver and gold. And a lot of times people chase like the accolades of men versus the accolades that come from God. And I, and I believe with every fiber of my being, when God elevates you, no one can knock you down. But when you elevate yourself, it's like you'll get torn down real quick. So that's what the scripture says to me is literally allow, allow God to, you know, elevate your reputation. Because when you are in him and you're abiding in him, the light of Christ shines through you. You don't have to say a word. Honestly, you really, truly do not have to say a word because the light of God says everything. I think you summed it all up. Now, you're right. Um, you know, we live in a world today where um, um, our reputation, our characteristic could get challenged. 
Um, it's just so many things that's going on. You know, when you, you, you know, we got to be mindful of the things we post on social media, even our integrity. You know, when we, when we go to a workplace, you know, we may have po- people that oppose the word of God and they, they may tell us to do things that's unethical. And, um, that may scar or our reputation or what we stand for. So yeah, um, it is God. It is the word of God that that keeps us uh, sober, that keeps us uh, to have a mindset of, uh, of Christ. And um, that's one of the reasons, Adney, like I love reading the gospels because the gospels, when you read the gospels, you, we get to see Jesus on front street. We get to see our teacher. We get to see our master. We get to emulate that. So when you, because that's one thing when I got saved, I started reading the gospel. I'm like, wow, Jesus Christ did that. I mean, I couldn't do the miracles, but I was like, wow, God, like the way you treated people, you know, your reputation, you know what I mean? So it's one of those things. So I like that passage. And even what it's talk about like silver and gold, you know, you'd be surprised the things that people do for money, right? That ruin their reputation. So we talk about, um, and I don't even want to get into it, like drug dealers, right? Like you said, man, I got to sell drugs, like, or, or I got to. I got to dance for some money, you know what I mean? Or, or I got to sell my body to get some some cash. And the things that people would do to, to scar their reputation. But like you said, Adney, um, our, but in the end, our faith and our hope is really in the Lord, pretty much. And that will help us even with our reputation. But but let's 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 get right into it. You know, <laughs> I know, I know, Adney, I know if you were saying this, you'd be like, oh, this probably was a long time coming. Cause I'm sure you heard this sister testimony, but I'm just going to welcome my sister, 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 Stephanie, Stephanie Brown. How you doing? I am doing good. Good evening. <laughs> yeah. She looking all all innocent. Her name is, we gonna call her Missy, Missy Brown. I'm not going to call you by your full, full name. So we will call you Missy Brown. <laughs> yeah. So my name is Stephanie, but people know me as Missy because sometimes people are like, who's Stephanie? And I'm like, that's me. But I prefer to be called Missy. But you can call me Stephanie too, but I'm Missy. Everybody knows me as Missy. Amen. Amen. Adam, you're not going to say none. You just, just got, see, 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 Adam, you play. I'm sitting here because I know this, uh, this sister and I, we've been in a mastermind group together and, um, In September, she did her first vision board party. And within that vision board party, the words that she shared with us was very impactful. So I know that our listeners will truly be impacted by her testimony, um, by the calling that she has on her life, the love that she has for the Lord, the passion that she has to help others, to me is just, um, it's unspeakable. So I'm just like, I'm just waiting for us to get started. <laughs> well, let's let's do this. Let's so Sister Stephanie, take about 20 seconds and just tell our audience what you're about. Just introduce yourself. Okay. Well, my name is Stephanie. You can call me Missy. I live in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm a mother. My son is 17 years old. Um, I am a speaker. I host. I'm a co-author. I have my own show um on Jesus Sprinkle. And the show is catered around self-love, self-worth. It's a passion of mine. I am working on my website now, but I also have a YouTube page where I'm doing encouragement. I have to get back on that and posting more because I've been so busy doing other things. And um, I'm also a self-development coach. It is my passion. It is my baby. And I love it. Hey, man, this is a sister with many gifts, many talents. So we we know this going to be good. <laughs> So you, so sister, sister Brown, you, you in a, you in a cold Massachusetts. Is it cold up there? It's actually warm today. It was 70 degrees. That's kind of scary because it's October. That's warm for October here, but I know we're going to get a brutal winter. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for making it midway through this episode. We want to take a moment to sincerely thank each and every one of you who have been supporting our show. Your encouragement and positive feedback mean the world to us. We want to continue to bring you inspiring and thought-provoking content each week, and that's where we need your help. We kindly ask you to support our podcast by clicking on the link provided in the description below. Your support will enable us to grow, reach a wider audience, and continue to produce the quality content you enjoy. We truly appreciate your support and value your contribution to the Call by God podcast together. 
Let's inspire and uplift others in their faith journey. Thank you once again for your continued support, and we look forward to bringing you more enlightening episodes in the future. God bless. Wow. Okay, cool, cool. Well, Sister Brown, I'm, I'm sure our listeners want, want us to get right into it. So um, this show is about one's testimony. And I believe in the power of, of a person's testimony. Uh, it was a, a testimony of, of, you know, God shared testimonies. You know, people in the Bible had their testimonies. The woman at the well, she went ahead and told the folks <laughs> about Jesus, about, you know, what Jesus told her, all that she has done. She went ahead and testified. And I believe that when uh, folks use their uh, story, I believe that it could brought, you know, draw people closer uh, to Christ. And we want you to go back and talk about the origin of your story uh, before you be- became a Christian. And I don't know how long you've been a Christian, but I guess you could talk about before you been a Christian, before you was a Christian, how was life like before you, you gave your life uh, to the Lord? Um, well, I've been a Christian since my son was nine months old, but I was lukewarm. I was a lukewarm Christian, but we can get into that later. But I feel like I really, really became a, a like a. have always been a Christian, but I feel like I was really walking with God three years ago, but we can go back. So before I became a Christian, I was just, Missy was just Missy. Like she was just a puppet, a puppet. Like I was doing things everybody else's way. I didn't have my own mind. I was doing everything everybody else was making everybody else happy. Uh, didn't know my worth or my self esteem. I would just let people talk and do me any kind of way, and I just didn't like the way that I was just feeling. You know, I grew up in a Christian home. My family grew up in Church of Christ like all their life, and I've always had that. I guess like a spiritual thing within me, and I'm like, I don't know. I just don't feel right. Like I think I want to get baptized. So I went to visit my grandparents in Florida. They was going to a church of Christ out there in West Palm Beach. And I told my grandmother, I said, I think I want to get baptized. And she was like, okay. And then they baptized me. My son was nine months old. My parents flew to Florida and everything. I was just visiting. So I've always had it in my heart to want to be a child of God. But the process and like the road to it wasn't, it wasn't easy because I wasn't behaving as one, to be honest. I wasn't, I, I didn't change. I was just baptized. I went to church. Like I went to church every Sunday, pay my tithes. And it was like, peace out, out the door. I wasn't fellowshipping with no one. I wasn't involved with anybody in getting involved in activities. I was like mute. I was just, just there. Once they said, amen, I was out the door back to regular life. And so why, why did you get baptized? Cause I, I think that's important. What you're saying right, ha- right now, like how you say you just got baptized and you was out. So I want to know what propelled you to get baptized. Like why would one get baptized and not want to fellowship with the saints or, or just shoot the peace sign? Like what was the conviction? So at that time I was going through a lot with my son's father and I just didn't like, like, I'm like, I don't like how I'm living. Like, it's just something just don't feel right what I'm doing, you know? And, you know, I was like still going to church, un, you know, not saved at that time. And I always felt like it was weird. I just felt like a, like God was just trying to get my attention, you know? And I'm like, I want, I don't want to go to hell, you know? <laughs> like, I want to live right. I want to be a good example, you know, for my son and for people around me. And, you know, that, and my grandmother used to always talk to me and she used to always pour into me and let me know that I was special and I was different. And I'm like, really? Like I used to say that, but she always used to pour that into me. And I just really, I just felt like, like Christian women, the ones that I seen, they just seemed like they were, even though they went through things, they still had a certain type of peace if that makes sense. And I, and I'm like, I don't have that piece. Like maybe I need to get closer to God because, you know, something's not working. So even though that's like what I wanted, I just went through so much with trying to, I was in a shell, to be honest. Like 
I was in a shell. I was scared of how I was going to be looked at. I was already, even when I got pregnant with my son, I felt like, oh my God, like I'm not married and I got a whole baby in my stomach. And what are people going to think? And I'm like, oh my goodness. And like, my family wasn't disappointed or nothing, but it was just like, but you know, we grew up in church. I am not married and I'm coming to church with a baby with my baby's father's not here with me. We were together, but he was, you know, we weren't doing it together. So I was just like, I don't like this. Like, I want to do things the right way. (laughs) I felt, I just felt so embarrassed then. I felt so embarrassed. Like 19 year old Missy felt so embarrassed. I did. And even though I got baptized, it just still wasn't feeling, I just didn't have that connection with God that I should have had. I was like in and out. Like I paid my tithes and it was like, bye, see you later. Oh, Missy, you staying? I can't, I gotta go. I was literally lying. So Missy, um, what do you think hindered that, that connection or that relationship with God? I, I'm going to tell you why what you're saying is so powerful because there are people, there might probably be people out there that just get saved. They just get dumped in the water and say, look, I don't want to have to do nothing with fellowship. I don't want to have to do nothing with Jesus. I, I just want to do um, the things that, that pe- the, the church leaders tell me to do, pay my tithes, my offerings, um, be present, but not present, if you know what I mean. Um, so I, I want you to kind of like, <laughs> what, like pretty much what hinder you from getting that relationship with Christ and even the, the fellow members of the body? Honestly, I think it was because I didn't have no self-esteem. And I didn't know. I really didn't know. I was not, I'm not, I was not reading no Bible. I wasn't. Like I would read a couple of scriptures and I was not reading no Bible. But see, the thing was, I was all, see, that's how I know like God had his hand on me because I, even like when I was working, I would put up spiritual quotes and it would inspire my coworkers. They would literally come to my desk. Like I'm coming to Stephanie's desk because she's so positive. See, so I always had that light. I've always had that light. I was always that salt. But see, I didn't know that. I let it go over my head. Like I was ignoring what God was like pulling at me. And I was just like, it just was, I was ignoring it, which caused me to not fellowship the way that I should have been fellowshipping. I was ignoring the way he was trying to show me the the impact that I had, like with my coworkers. These are people that are not even saved. And I actually, to be honest with you, the people that are not saved are the people that gravitate to me the most. I'm listening to you because you said something that caught my attention. You said you were a puppet. Um, And we know puppets are dangling on a string. And when we allow people to have that power over us, when we allow people to determine the steps that we're taking in life, we miss God in the whole scheme of things. So when you said that, that word puppet, I was like, Hmm. So can you share with us? Like, how were you being used as a puppet um, versus being who God called you to be? Well, for one, I would look for attention, and validation. If you didn't like what I was doing, okay, fine. I'm not going to do it. You don't like what I'm doing. So I'm going to please you. People pleasing and attention. Now, granted, I'm a speaker and I like to do stuff like this. So of course, in reality, you like attention, right? But I want attention to be organic, organic attention. You know, I'm still learning and growing too. You know, like I'm not the same girl, the same woman or girl that I was then. So people were puppeting me. Like they, they had my mind, like what I say goes, you're going to do this. I don't care. And I'm like, okay. Cause I wanted to make them happy, make them satisfied. And I always needed like, what do you think this about this? What do you think about that? If they didn't like it, Missy didn't like it either, but I could have really liked it. I was a puppet. I was definitely a puppet. And that's so powerful. And the reason I'm saying that, because there's a young lady out there who is a puppet. And she doesn't have the self-esteem or the self-worth 
the validation that comes from God. The worst possible thing that we can do as human beings is seek validation from man because man validation is so corrupt, <laughs> right? Man's validation is limited. Whereas when God validates you, he says to you, I, before I, form, before I uh, formed you in the womb, I knew you. God's validation says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So when you came to yourself and, and, and it's like that spiritual prodigal son moment, because when people have your mind, you're in that space of pleasing them and not pleasing God. So when you had the spiritual prodigal son moment and you came to yourself and said, you know what? Missy is not about to be anyone's puppet anymore. God, what do, what say ye, Jesus? What do you want me to do? When did that process happen for you? That happened during the pandemic. During the pandemic. Oh my goodness. So we had to work from home. I was so like, I do not want to work from home. Like I was like crying to my boss. He's like, you're going to be fine, Stephanie. You're going to be fine. I'm like, I don't want to work from home. I just felt so confined to think. And then I'm like, I don't like this. And then I, you know, like with a certain relationship that I had, I realized like, what am I doing? Like, why am I chasing? Why am I like crying for attention from a man? Like, what is wrong with me? I have a son who's, who, who's seeing this, you know? And that's not good. And I said, I don't like this. And then, you know, when I was, I just was like, you know, God, I don't know what your purpose is for my life, but I'm going to need you to really show me in this space because I'm just so unhappy. And it wasn't the guy's fault. It wasn't no one's fault. This was all about me because I, I, I don't have control over a lot of things, but I have the control to change my life, to change myself, to change me. Giving someone else that power, that's all on me. I had to do a lot of, it was, it, the process was just like, it was hard because I had to come face to face with a lot of stuff. So during that pandemic, you know, I just was like, you know, God, what is my purpose? Like, because something is just off. And that's when I was invited to a prayer call. And I'm like, okay, yeah. And it was just like, I got invited. I'm like, all right, cool. Then this lady asked me to speak. And I said, absolutely not. Because I don't do that. I'm not speaking. And I thought about it. And I'm like, nah, I think I'm going to go for it. And I went for it. And it just was like up from there. I just started participating and I started liking it. And I'm like, oh my God, maybe I should be like a speaker. But it's so funny because when I was a little girl, I wanted to be an actress. My mother would have me audition for things and I would get picked. But she said I used to just like cry and say I didn't want to do it. Don't know why or whatever, but I always got picked. So this was nothing new. I've done school plays. I wrote for like things and I won. I just, I just feel like God just is just like, okay, it's time now. Cause I even talked myself out of it. Like I'm just too old. And it, and it's so amazing, right? Like God chooses us for a journey and a purpose. And I was just telling brother Nick that I don't believe that God has us here on this time side of life to spend all of our days working someone's nine to five. I don't believe that's why we're here. I believe that God has us here to dis to number one be his dis his um, disciples and then to disciple others. And within that process of discipling others, the provisions come because it's like here it is, Missy. I can see you on somebody's stage. I can see you performing for um. But in that performance is like your light, the light of Christ shining through you and people wondering, wait a minute, what makes her different than everybody else? You understand what I'm saying? So that's some, so that's what it's like. He, he called you for something and that, that, that light, that thing that he says, Missy, before I formed you, I knew you. It's inside of you. How do you share that with the world. How do, how will Missy be that, that transformation agent, not change agent? Because I believe change can, and we can go back. But when we transform, a butterfly never turns back into a caterpillar. Once it transforms to that beautiful butterfly, it stays that way. It can't go back. So 
what do you believe that God is calling Missy Brown to do to transform this world, not change it? Speak to talk. And I want to piggyback on something you said about employment, because I had a moment with my supervisor, because I'm very open with him and I'm very grateful that he's in my life because me and him talk and I told him, like when I started discovering all this, I said, I don't know, I think I'm going to get in, I'm going towards public speaking. And he was like, okay, because I want to do a public speaking and management. And he was like, okay, well, I can help you with that. And it's so funny because we had a meeting and he said, um, so what do you like, what do you want to do next? Because I know you're saying you want to do public, public speaking. So what's next? And I said, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see myself here much longer. Like, I'm just being honest with you. I see myself. I don't, I've done everything in healthcare, but be a physician. And I just, I'm just over it. Like I am. And he was like, okay. He was like, and that's fine. He said, whatever it is that makes you happy, that makes you feel good when you wake up in the morning, do it. And when he said that to me, it let me know that, first of all, I was kind to him to say that. That's number one. And then he also made a statement. He was like, I see how you grow, have you, how you have grown since you started in this position, how you are such a team player and you are an impact for change. When he said that, I said, oh my God, <laughs> I can't believe he said that to me. It was just shocking that he observed that. And that lets me know that God has a purpose for me through my speaking, through my talking, whether it's through my writing, that it is going to change someone's lives and the lives of others through my voice. Hey, y'all, this is how we talk in the fellowship hall, but it's, it's Sister Missy Brown, it's something you said, and it, it just can't, I just can't let it go. Because um, I always reflect on uh, when I got saved, when I gave my life to the Lord, it was one of those moments that, Man, um, I'm trying not to get emotional because every time I think about it, it's it's something that would cause me to get emotional. Because you know, when you when you when you are lost, you're on the verge of going to hell. You're on the verge of destruction. And when God intervened, and then somebody have a heart to share the gospel with you, and then you have that moment like, "Wow, God, like you died for me." Especially when you start to understand the cross or why Jesus Christ came and died and and gave his life for you. So I want our listeners to understand that giving your life to Christ is not something small. This is something that's big. That's why when when you when I ask you the question, you know, when you came to Christ and I know you say you, you was going through something and that's what ultimately led you to give your life to Christ. But the thing is, when Christ called us, when we're saved and he's called us, because one brother said we have two callings. The first calling, God is going to call you to salvation. And the second call is when he call you back home, our rare home, heaven, when he called us home. So I was like, oh, I said, that's very interesting what you says, you know, says. So when God called us the first time, God expect us to make disciples. God expect us to be selfless. God expects us to fellowship. God expects us to do kingdom things. So that's why when you said that, you know, you gave your life to Christ and, and that was it. Because there are people like that. And you, you had your aha moment in, in, in the, you know, 2020 during the pandemic. So what would be an advice that you could give somebody that's probably delaying their call, their purpose? Because I, I, I don't even know how long it took you to have that aha moment. I don't know if it was over a decade or because you, you do look young. So, <laughs> so I, don't, I don't know if it was five years, seven, ten years, or, or you just was like Moses. You know, Moses in Egypt for 40 years and 40 years with God <laughs> and 40 years in the wilderness. So kind of like help our listeners to get out that slump because there might probably be somebody that gave their life to Christ and they just play in church. I had a guest on here that said, you know what? I was playing church. I ain't gonna lie. I was playing church. If I would have died, I would bust that wide open. I was playing church. Help our listeners out, Sister Missy right. Brown. 
So I think that's very important because, I, you know, I had explained this to someone like they're like, oh, well, I got baptized. You can. OK, fine. You got baptized, but you cannot get baptized. Still treating people the way you do. Still out here doing what you know is wrong and think you going to heaven. It don't work like that. And then I have to really break it down to people and explain to them. OK, so if you on your job you want a promotion so you coming in late not showing up not calling in cursing your boss out you think you're going to be a promo- get a promotion so you treat god the same way i felt like this i was lukewarm with god and wanted him to bless me with so much who am i to be lukewarm with god want so much and can't even give him some time to serve I had to check myself before I wreck myself. Sometimes you got to give yourself a reality check because if you don't give it to you, then guess what? Somebody else going to put it in your face. Don't let nobody put nothing in your face. I already know, so you can't throw it at me. Like, that's just the God honest truth. And I got to tell people that because they be trying to come with some stuff that don't make no sense. Anybody can go to church. Anybody can sit on a pew. But what you doing after? We ain't perfect. We ain't, none of us is perfect at all. But come on, you don't, you can't expect God to give you all this and you can't give him nothing. Okay. You went to church. Okay. And anybody can do that. My one, my two year old nephew can go to church, you know, like, come on. Like God wants to bless us and he wants us to be obedient. And it's, it's, it's a process, but it's, it's possible. Give yourself some grace, have some honest talk with yourself and do just, just, just do it. Just try and just do it. Don't be lukewarm. I'm telling you, I was lukewarm. I was too lukewarm. Don't nobody like lukewarm. I mean, people like iced coffee, but I'm pretty sure they don't like lukewarm coffee. You know, it's nasty. You know, and I was praying big to God and I, and I was praying like a Christian praying. And he was absolutely like, absolutely not. <laughs> like You're absolutely not getting it. So you need to get it together all the way together. So, you know, just take that time, you know, just check yourself. Don't beat yourself up now. Just check yourself. Be kind to yourself. If you want God to bless you, like, what are you doing? Like, are you, are you, there's a lot you can do, you know? I mean, there's so much you can do for him. I think the biggest thing that I want to ask is this, when it comes to his word, because a lot of people feel like, well, I got baptized. I'm working in the church and that's it. Right. But there's a spirit that dwells inside of you that looking at you like, okay, you're doing that external stuff. What about the internal work? And that takes you opening the great book, the book, the mirror. And that's, you know, that's what Paul says. You know, when we look in that, that, that law of liberty, that, that, that transformed us. Right. Um, When you started recognizing, Hey, I'm lukewarm. What did it take? You understand what I'm saying? Not just the talking to yourself, but when you got into that word, right? And that word said, oh, Missy, (laughs) there's some stuff missing. (laughs) We need you to start like, you know, not just checking off stuff, but really digesting his word, really meditating. On his word, because your your work, the, the transformational work that you're doing, it requires you to say, hey, that Bible that you have in your back seat that's collecting dust, it's time for you to pull it out. You understand what I'm saying? Like, because this is how that transformation is going to take place. You can't just work for God. I believe that we can work for the Lord, but we cannot be servants. There's a difference between being a servant for, of God and being a worker for God. Because I could go to church all day. I can go to that building all day and work. But where's that servant, heart, that servant's heart? I only learn it through his word. So share with our listeners, like in that process of you finding out, Missy, you jacked up. You need to get this, this together. You need to get hot and not cold or being lukewarm. Because Jesus said, I will spit you out my mouth if you're lukewarm. How did that process happen for you? So I was like, you know what? I got to get back in my Bible, but how, like, I don't know what to do. So I started really thoroughly, like when I was going, I started, I actually started participating in Bible classes at my church. That's how I was learning. So I was like, okay, this is good. Cause like when my minister would give me like, you know, give out scriptures, I would actually read them this time, just read them. And I started bringing pencils and paper. Like I was really into it. So I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, 
this is all the things God thinks of, of me? And I don't even feel like this about my own self. I never felt like I was fearfully and wonderfully made or, you know, self-worth and self-esteem. Because all that comes with it. You know, it's, you can say it, but if you ain't living it or you ain't, it, it, it really doesn't mean anything. But I honestly think, like, when I do Bible classes, that really drives me to stay in my Bible it keeps me in there. And then now it's just like a habit. I don't feel right if I'm not given like studying. I don't feel right. So that's how I just started. Cause I was like, I got to How do I get back into my Bible? And I just started participating in like, um, Wednesday night Bible studies or whatever. And, um, I'm sorry. Like, um, I went to a new converts class, even though I wasn't a new convert, I was, I got to start all over. So I went to a new converts class and instead of me, cause I used to go to Bible study when we was in person and I was like, please God, don't let him call my name. Don't let him call my name to participate. He never did, but now I just can't shut up at all. Cause I'm always participating. <laughs> I'm always participating. But the moral of the story is honestly, I was holding my own self back. Why was you holding your own self back? I don't know. I honestly don't know. What was I so scared of? Because everything is, it's just like when I read the word of God, I just, I literally like shout. I'm so happy. But that takes time. You have to be dedicated and be serious. And it took me a while to get there. I just put my mind to it and I did it. And it's, it's like really working for me. It's working for me. Missy Brown, I, I want to thank you wholeheartedly for, for sharing that. And this is not to bash uh, those that are playing church, but we, we try to help you guys. We try to help you guys love Jesus the Christ again. You know, um, Jesus Christ was calling Peter. He said, Peter, <laughs> do you love me? Peter, Peter. He kept calling Peter. He said, Peter. Go feed my sheep. Go feed my people. So that's that's the heart that we have to have. Like, do we really love Jesus? Because if we really love Jesus, we'll go ahead and feed his people. We'll go feed our brethren. We'll go feed the, the, the lost souls that's yearning to have a heart to draw closer to them. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of women at the well. There's quite a few women at the well that we're missing. We're bypassing them. So that's why, um, Missy Brown, I, I thank you so much for sharing that because it's not just about getting baptized. Yeah, the baptized puts you in the body of Christ. It gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit, but it also puts you in union. It puts you in marriage. You know, I'm, I'm married. I've been married for quite some time now, but man, it puts you in a spiritual marriage. You're connected. You're in a relationship with God and God yearns for that relationship. So imagine getting baptized. So Christ is saying, hey, I'm married to you now. And you shoot him the peace out. You ignore him all the time. My my wife would if I if I would have walked down that aisle with my wife, and every time I walk in the house, I ignore her, I don't say a word. I would hear she she'd be like, What's wrong with you, boy? And I'm like, I ain't saying none. I'm just mute. I'm like dumb, like ain't saying none. She'll say, you know what? It's time for a divorce. Cause things things not working out with us. Cause ever since you got married, you don't say nothing. I cook for you, I wash your clothes. I provide for you. I iron. I make sure you have a lunch. I take care of you. I give you words of encouragement and you don't say nothing. And that's how we do God. We get married to him. He provides for us. He do all. We ask him for blessings. We use him and abuse him. Oh, God, give me this. God, give me this. But God is like, hey, I'm, I'm right here. I want, I want a relationship with you. Like, can you, can you make some time? Make some time for me, right? So with that being said, Missy, um, what's some words of encouragement that you can share with someone out there that's struggling, that's in a place that you were, once were um, prior to the pandemic? You know, just, just a minute or two, what's some words of encouragement that you could help that individual to get out that slump to love Jesus Christ again? My words of encouragement would be, First of all, I like what you said about the relationship part, because I felt like I was wanting a relationship with a man and did not have a relationship with, with God, with Christ. Okay. If you are in a slump, whatever that slump is, 
like, okay, I'm just going to use this as an example with me. I was in a slump where I wanted a man to spend time with me, do all these things with me and everything like that. Here I am, a Christian woman, wanting all that, and I'm not even doing that with Christ. Why would I want, why am I, I'm not even doing this to someone, like you said, that I decided to marry, spiritual marriage with, but want this from an earthly human being that is got, can do whatever he want, whatever he want, but got someone over here that'll never change. You know, so if you're in a slump, really take some time to figure out why you are in that slump. How is your relationship with with God? Like, how is it? Because so what we go through sometimes reflects how we are with God. It's a lot of reflection. Don't stay in a slump. Get out of it because you don't want to be slumped down and slumped under and you get looked over. So. You you got to like, I encourage you, if you in that slump, get out of that slump, get close to the God. And I promise you, I promise you, he going to turn that thing around. What you chase will chase you. And then you'll decide if you want to be bothered or not. Like, uh, you're going to have to, you got to have to talk to God to get to me because uh, something ain't right. <laughs> like you're going to have to talk to God to get to me, you know? So you know, just work on yourself, work on your, your self-esteem, work on why you're in that slump. You know, don't beat yourself up because we human, we could be, uh, I used to beat myself down and I'm so grateful that I had people who were stronger than me who said, no, you will not. And that's important too. support. Make sure you have the right support to get you out of that slump. Cause sometimes we need help. We need to be lift up. And, you know, we got to be lived up. So I encourage you to just get out that slump, do a little self-evaluation, you know, get you some help, whatever the help may be, get closer to God. And I promise you, you're going to, you're going to be fine. It's a process, but you're going to be fine. You open up those, those, that book, open up that Bible. If you got a Google God, I'm feeling depressed today. What do I do? It'll lead you to some type of scripture. You just go from there. You know, it's just very important because like I said, some people, they don't even open a Bible and you might just have to be that Bible for them. That's just the God honest truth. Because like I said, I seem to attract a lot of people who are not saved. (laughs) Like they're not, but I'm grateful. That lets me know, you know, that, you know, God wants me to do. And I still do. Like I said, you know, we're going to pray about it. Now, if you don't want to pray about it, you don't believe in Jesus, then I don't, I don't, I don't know what you want me to do right now. <laughs> like you calling me, that's what we're going to do. Like we're going to, it's going to be in Jesus name. That's just the God on his truth. That's just where I stand. I put that out there with whomever. And some of them, I, they be like, okay, you know, <laughs> they be like, okay. But you know, I just got to put that out there. Cause I'm not going to downplay what I believe in. That's just, no, I'm not doing that. So, you know, if you're in that slump, that's what I would encourage. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that. So, you know, in closing, because I know the mic is hot right now. <laughs> we could, the mic is extremely hot. <laughs> so where where can our, our listeners uh, uh, find you uh, online? Because look, I mean, I, I believe you're a dynamic sister. I believe that God is going to do a one is doing a wonderful work in you. And, and there's ways to go. He's going to use you in a mighty, mighty way. So where can our listeners find you? I mean, somebody's out there probably said, man, where can we find this sister, man? This sister here, <laughs> she done outlift me. You encourage me, sis. <laughs> oh, thank you. So everything, like my Facebook is Missy Brown. My Instagram is Missy Brown. <laughs> everything straightforward, Missy Brown. My YouTube is Missy Brown. So you can always find me on those social media platforms. I'm always available. I'm always like open. I Everything on my page is going to be encouraging. If you don't like it, just keep scrolling. But I'm just, I love encouraging people because it's, it's a dark world we're living in. And I just, I believe, I know and believe that there is so much light that God wants to give everyone. And I do truly believe that these are our final days because it's a lot going on in this world. And every, a, a little encouragement and positivity can go a long 
way. Amen, amen. But yes, everything is Missy Brown. Missy Brown. Okay, y'all check her out. Missy spelled as M-I-S-S-Y, y'all. Missy Brown. Y'all check yes. her out. Missy, thank you so much for your story. Like I said, I knew when we did the um, the vision board party, what you shared with us was going to be impactful. Um, I'm excited for what God is doing with you. I don't believe that God try. I believe that God does. We're the ones that try. And what he's doing with you, you continue to keep your hands in his and you try to continue to stay close to him because he's already drawing close to you. Thank you, my sister, for saying yes. All right, world. So there you have it. Sister, sister, Missy Brown. I almost said Stephanie Brown. Y'all check her out. Y'all follow her. Go on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, wherever she's at. Y'all check her out. (laughs) This was a powerful episode that blessed me. But remember that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and he's the Lord of Lords. Be blessed. That's it for now. But before we go, please continue to listen, subscribe, and share our podcast. Also, if you want to support our show, please scroll down to the bottom of the show notes and click on the link that says buy me a coffee. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. And remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And also Jesus Christ loves you. Thank you. Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel, which is the good news, which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed. He was buried and he rose on the third day by believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized. You will be saved. So it is your choice. Jesus Christ will not force you. You've heard the message. You heard personal testimonies. But this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Don't wait until tomorrow, because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God and give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.